Hey buddies, Sunnuts Guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. In this video, I am going to tell you guys about my weapon preferences. What I think are the best weapons for various stages of the game, why I choose to use them, and uh, what there are, what other options might be available. And we're just going to talk about weapons, guys. All right, so I want to start by making a point. There is no best weapon in RL Craft 2.9. It is circumstantial, depending on your play style, depending on your preferences, um, depending on what you might be doing in the game at the time. Shivaxi's done a really, really good job at balancing the weapons. So today I'm talking about my favorite weapons, the weapons that I think are the best weapons for me specifically um, at various stages of my playthrough. And we're also just going to talk about some extra stuff and things as well. So first things first, when I get straight in, I usually go for a spear, a stone shield, and sometimes stone throwing knives if I feel like I want a ranged option very, very early. There's no level requirement for any of, any of these things. You don't need arrows because the throwing knives gives you 16 uh, ammo for the throwing knives, which you can also pick up. But it also just takes one string, one stick, and one stone, so you can make Pretty much as many of these as you want, of course. The stone spear I really like because it has the reach. So it's the only one-handed weapon. You see, it's not two-handed. It's a one-handed weapon that has reach. So it's, again, it's play. It's a little bit of a safer playstyle because you can hit things one block further than you could otherwise. And, of course, the shield just to give you some protection against the one-shot skelly or the two-shot skelly snipers and other potential things that could end your life. Now, I will always... Nine time, 99 times out of 100, I'd be leveling up my protections before my defense before my attack. So I'll usually get my defense to eight and I'll still be using my stone spear. So I'll still be using my stone spear. I'll get my defense up to eight. I'll have iron armor. I'll have my iron shield and I will still be using a stone spear. I may even be using a bow at this point if I've found a structure that has lots of arrows or I've somehow gotten a num good number of arrows and I may have gotten just a bow off of a skelly or I may have crafted one because they're obviously ridiculously cheap to craft. I may still just have the stone throwing knives with me for whatever reason as well at this stage of the game. Obviously moving on then, we'll be moving on to the iron spear. So I'll still be in the iron armor. I'll then move on to my iron spear, iron shield, iron armor, iron spear, and bow. Again, prioritizing the defense levels. So I'll be moving on to diamond armor, diamond shield before I get my diamond weapons. So I'll still be iron spear, diamond tower shield, and iron strength and long bow. Iron Strength and Longbow is a maybe. I don't go to this too often. I normally just use my bow uh, until uh, until you can get to the point where you can get the diamond strengthened. Um, but Iron Strengthened, if you are using your bow a lot, you could craft that as well. Now, once my uh, attack levels catch up to my defense levels, you guessed it, we've got a diamond spear and a diamond shield. Uh, at this stage, though, I'll also consider uh, actually upgrading. Uh, this is when I'll usually upgrade my bow. I'll usually get a diamond strength and longbow or at least a diamond strength and crossbow. And the reason for that is the diamond strength and crossbow is very, very, very good at taking out dragons at really long range without gra grabbing their aggro. Um, so it is a little bit cheesy. You know, you're basically going to fight them without having to fight them. Um, and this stage of the game is, is, is where you're going to want to be utilizing that. Then once we're entering the end game, we've got, say, our dragon armor or our tide guardian armor or golem armor, whatever the case may be. I forgo the shield usually at this point. Sometimes here, let me backtrack a little bit. Sometimes here, actually, we'll, we'll potentially sometimes end up with a great sword here as well. So if I, if I end up with some good armor enchants, I've got some diamond armor with some good enchants. Maybe I found some good villagers. Maybe I got lucky. I got advanced protection or I got strength and vitality or uh, maybe I've just got lifesteal and vampirism, so I feel comfortable taking, I feel comfortable removing my defensive playstyle with my shield and my spear, and I might move on to a more farming playstyle. And what I mean by that is this has sweep to and reach with a decent amount of damage attached to it. So I can go to doom likes, I can go to roguelikes, I can go to thick battle towers, um, four towers too, but they tend to group up a little bit less, but actually still quite a bit to be honest. So four towers as well. I can have a wave of enemies, a huge wave of enemies coming towards me, and I can just be sweeping and cleaving through them, really quickly farming experience, 
um, with a diamond great sword. So sort of around this stage, I might forgo my um, my uh, my defensive playstyle with the spear and the shield and go on to a great sword for the farming uh, before I then get into the late late game when I'm going to be talking about uh, tier five dragon dens. I'm going to be talking about the lost cities, etc. And, and I'm going to be talking about the potential end game bosses as well. I'll, I'll normally move on to a pike at this stage because yes, it is single target, but if you get yourself arc slash or sweeping edge, preferably arc slash, you know, you're still going to be having your AOE. But the reach two is the key factor. The fact that this has reach two is insane. It's such a large amount of reach. Um, and then you can obviously extend that with the quality. You can uh, extend that with even uh, rings or potions, etc. Um, so having that sing high single target damage with potential within chance for AOE, but having that additional range, particularly in, say, the Lost Cities, where things can one, two, three shot you, even in advanced protection golem gear sometimes, and they do so much durability damage that if they get in close and get a couple of hits consecutively, even if it doesn't kill, you might break your armor, therefore, you're going to die very shortly after. So the Dragonbone Pike is what I go for at the end game, along with the Flame Dragonbone Long Glow. I never use crossbows unless I'm going for dragons around the Diamond Strength and Crossbow stage of the game. I am always been a, a longbow kind of guy. And then if we're talking about real, the reality, the best weapons in the game, we are talking about the Sentient Scythe, the Sentient Great Bow, and everyone always forgets about the Sentient Great Axe, so we're going to give it a little bit of honorable mention here as well. Um, the Sentient Great Axe is also Pog. It just doesn't look as cool as the Scythe, guys. So people tend to roll with the Scythe. Sentient Scythe, Sentient Great Bow, Sentient Great Axe are the best weapons in the game without a shadow of a doubt, especially seeing as they've been buffed now in 2.9.1c as opposed to 2.9. They do extra damage compared to what they used to. Definitively the best weapons in the game. If you want to learn how to farm these weapons, they're quite difficult to do so. They're very late end game farmable weapons. Uh, you got to farm them up in the Lost Cities. I've created a guide on how to do so. Uh, you can always check the channel or I'll put that in the top right corner for you guys as well. So that's a bit about my, my, that's me talking about weapons, guys. Me talking about weapons. Now, this is obviously my opinion. These are my preferences. This is based on my play style. I know a lot of people that still use, say, the saber or rapier because it has that 25% damage reduction, which then goes to the weapon as durability loss instead of damage to you or health. So it can be a really nice play. Uh, a, a, another defensive option. You don't have the reach for that defensive, so it's a slightly different play style. It's more expecting to take damage, but reducing that damage, whereas the spear has that extra reach to mitigate the risk of taking that damage in the first place because of, of the range. Uh, but still a lot of people, you know, some people still use the spear. I really want to do more testing with the nunchucks. The nunchucks could be pog. You, the nunchucks have a, a thing where you can just continually spin the nunchucks. Let's just grab one real quickly so I can show you. It's actually really cool. So you can get that, and we're actually going to grab something else that I can show you something else as well. So if you just hold it down, it'll continually spin. And it just like whack, 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 whack. Might be good with combo, viper, envenomed, etc., etc. But you can also hold your shield. Uh, my shield? my shield. You can also hold your shield, though, while doing it, which is really cool. So I can not wear a shield. Hello? There we go. I can hold my shield up and swing. Wait, I gotta swing it and then hold my shield up. So I can hold my shield up and be swinging my nunchuck at the same time, which is actually really, really, really cool. So I want to do more testing with the nunchucks. I think it'd be really cool, maybe for shredding bosses or things with high health, like uh, tower golems, etc. Um, any other weapons that I want to talk about quickly? No, I think that's pretty much it. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people like the long sword, high target, single damage, great sword, great cleave. We already talked about a lot of people still swear by the halberd, high damage, single target, good reach, um, but is two handed. Oh, one tip, one final tip, guys, before I head off. Um, and this is a big one, guys. Two handed weapons, two hand, two handed weapons. Okay. Do not use a shield with a two-handed weapon, okay? Look, you get Mining Fatigue 4. I can use Vitamins. I can use Vitamins to get rid of that. Or Onk Shield, or whatever the case may be. Look, my, 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 my Mining Fatigue is gone. I can attack as quickly as I should normally be able to attack. So that should be great, right? No. Look at the weapon. Two-handed. Any item in the opposite hand slows down attack speed, which is the Mining Fatigue, and reduces damage by 50% unless wielded by a titan okay so yes you can get rid of the mining fatigue with the with the vitamins or onk charm or whatever but it doesn't work look at my damage wait these guys are already here nine 
11. 18, that was crit. 9. What I should be doing is a lot more. I should be doing double. Can't see the numbers here. Anyway, I think you get the point. So, guys, don't use two-handed weapons with anything in your offhand, even if you've got the vitamins, okay? It doesn't work. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. I go live on my Twitch channel pretty much every day, except Monday and Friday. I usually take for days to do editing. I run an RLCraft 2.9 SMP server. You guys will be welcome to join. Uh, all you got to do is jump on the Twitch channel, earn 3,000 channel points, unlock the whitelist of the channel point redemptions, and then you'll be able to join us. Alrighty, guys. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care.